Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Moniz, and this is the ASUS ROG Strix GL702 VM 17-inch gaming laptop. It's compact and it's portable and it's fantastic for gaming. Now the difference between this one and the GL502, which is the 15-inch version, is that this one has a bigger screen and it comes with a triple cooling system instead of a dual one. This also brings in the new GTX 1060, which means this laptop is VR ready. So is this the best 17-inch portable gaming laptop? Let's find out. So if you've watched my review on the GL502, you're gonna recognize this design. It's pretty much the exact same design. It has that beautiful metal brushed aluminum lid with the ROG logo in the middle and two diagonal lines, one on both sides, that light up when the laptop is on. Now, of course, this is not all metal. The deck is plastic with the same brushed look and the bottom is plastic too with orange rubber feet to keep it in place. Now, in terms of ports, you're not gonna get an optical drive and that's just because the laptop is fairly thin and you can't fit one in here, but the left side has your power connection RJ45 port, mini display port, HDMI port, one USB 3.1 Type-C port, one USB 3.0 port, and a combo audio jack. On the right, there's a Noble Lock, another USB 3.0 port, and a full-size SD card slot. The whole laptop weighs six pounds, which is four pounds lighter than the ASUS G752 OC Edition. So here's the thing, there's only two models to choose from. Both of them come with an NVIDIA GTX 1060, and they both come with 16 gigabytes of RAM. But you have the choice of what type of hard drive configuration you wanna buy it with. Now the most expensive unit retails for $1,600 US, which is the one I'm reviewing, but the one with the only one terabyte hard drive retails for $1,400 US. So opening up this laptop is actually quite easy. There's 10 screws you take off, and then you pry open the plastic lid on the bottom. And the first thing you're gonna notice is the triple fan cooling system. The small one in the middle is the additional fan, which the GL502 doesn't have. Now there's only one 16 gigabyte DIMM, but there's an extra slot in case you wanna upgrade it to 32 sometime down the road. On the left is an M2 SATA drive. It's not NVMe, so read and write speeds are gonna be slower. The drive is by a company called SK Hynix and an average read speeds of 525 megabytes a second and write speeds of 275. The other hard drive is a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive by HGST and the speeds were fine, averaging 134 megabytes a second and write speeds of 130. Now my suggestion for those of you considering this laptop is buy the cheaper model with the one terabyte hard drive and add your own NVMe hard drive sometime down the road because you're gonna be spending an extra 200 bucks for a M2 SATA drive, which I feel is not worth the price. And just like its little brother, it comes with a 1080p display and supports NVIDIA's G-Sync. And since the screen is matte, you won't get any glare, but the color representation isn't that great if you plan on using this laptop to edit video or do professional work in Photoshop. sRGB is 92%, which is fine for viewing media on the web, but Adobe RGB is around 72%, which is a little low for professional work. Above the display is the front-facing camera, which shoots in HD, but it might as well be a potato. The images are blurry, dark, and colors are poor represented it. I'm sure for most this is not a big deal, but if you video conference a lot, it's something to keep in mind. So below the display, we have a full-size keyboard with a numeric keypad. It has a dedicated ROG button to bring up the gaming center that lets you change profiles depending on what you're doing with the computer. The keys support anti-ghosting, so you can press up to 30 of them at the same time. And the key travel distance is a respectable 1.6 millimeters, which is above the 1.5 threshold that I feel should be the absolute minimum. It's not as satisfying as the G752, but good enough for gaming. The WSAD keys are colored a bright orange, and there's three levels of backlighting to choose from. Unfortunately, you can't change the color of the backlighting, so you're just gonna have to settle for red. And just below the keyboard is the touchpad. It's a good size and remarkably better than the one on the ASUS G752. It's much more accurate and doesn't have those cheap plastic buttons either. All right, so let's talk about the sound for a second. There are two front-facing speakers which are placed on the deck of the laptop. This already sounds much better than our speakers that are placed on the bottom or behind a laptop. You're gonna get better sound distribution. The speakers were created by a third-party manufacturer and what ASUS did was they got Ice Power, which is a subsidiary of Bang & Olufsen, to come in and equalize the sound. Now, is the sound good? It's pretty good. You get really nice highs and you have some bass as well. I did find the mids to be a little bit washed out, but nothing really to complain about. But I'm sure you're not here for the sound quality. I think most of you are mostly concerned about the performance. And performing, it does really well. So if you're buying this from Productivity Task, it's gonna laugh at it. You're gonna have zero issues working in Microsoft Office or working in Google Docs 
or even editing lots of pictures in Adobe Photoshop. You can even edit 4K video with this laptop. The leap from the 9 series graphics cards to the 10 series one is huge. The 1060 graphics card has zero issues playing any games at 1080p on high settings. So the first game I tried was Overwatch and it was averaging frame rates between 95 to 100 frames per second. Then I tried Doom, a more graphically demanding game, and I had zero issues hitting 75 frames per second with everything set to epic at 1080p. And last I tried the most demanding game or one of the most demanding games out there and that's Crisis 3 and it played absolutely fine at 1080p. I wasn't averaging 60 frames per second like I would have but you had no problems maintaining between 40 to 50 frames per second which will still offer a very enjoyable gaming experience. But what wasn't a good experience was heat. This laptop still gets quite hot and that was one of my biggest complaints about the GL502. It got really really hot on top of the deck where you couldn't really rest your hands without feeling uncomfortable. Now the good news is it doesn't feel uncomfortable when you touch this laptop. It still gets quite hot though. I was averaging temperatures on top of the deck of around 125 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. The same held true when I flipped it over and measured the heat on the back. Now the good news is I loaded up a CPU resource monitor and the CPU does not get throttled at all. So your CPU is gonna be used 100% of the time even at its hottest point. Now there are concerns about the long-term use. How does this affect the hardware inside over two years of use? That's something to take into consideration. In terms of battery performance, I was averaging three to four hours when I was doing simple productivity tasks like browsing the web, watching the movies, and working in Google Docs. In terms of gaming, you're not gonna get that great of battery life. I was averaging uh, times of around two to three hours before needing to plug in. All right, so here are my closing thoughts. The ASUS GL702 is a fantastic portable 17 inch gaming laptop. It has a lot of great things going for it. It has a beautiful design with a brushed metal aluminum lid. Uh, it has a lot of ports, so you can connect a lot of devices to it. The specs are good. However, I do recommend buying the, the cheaper model with one terabyte hard drive and then adding your own NVMe hard drive down the road. It's very fast. The, the, the 1060 graphics card is a huge jump from last year's 9 series. So you're gonna get good performance. You're gonna be able to play anything at 1080p and you can also do things like edit, edit photos in Photoshop and edit 4K video. Now, is this the best 17 inch gaming laptop on the market? It's really hard to say. I need to test more portable 17 inch gaming laptops first before I give you that decision. We're just getting to see a lot of the new uh, laptops with the new 10 series graphics card. So I will update my opinion as time goes on. So I want what you guys think of the ASUS Strix GL702VM in the comments below. Is this something you can see yourself buying? And if you have one already, let me know what you like or dislike about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because if you did, I'd love if you hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.